The PC gaming is having that upturn within its cycle again, despite Nvidia's best attempts to ruin it. And this is what RTX looks like. This is where we came from. You got to be proud of it. You got to own it. It's ugly, but you got to own it before RTX, after RTX. As always happens, and it's one of the biggest reasons we have premium consoles this generation, as I've covered before, as the performance limits top out on consoles, enthusiasts look for more, and PC is where that sits almost exclusively if power and performance are your priorities. As the title suggests though, it comes at a cost, with top level but not bleeding edge equipment carrying an inflated premium. But is a $600 or £500 RTX 2070 really worth the cost, let alone a $1200 2080 Ti? As it stands, an overclocked 2070 is well within 1080 performance in many games and in excess on others. The gains to the Ti are there, but the value makes that card much, much worse value. The promise of things to come such as RTX features which are still almost non-existent besides EA's partnership with Nvidia allowing the DICE team to add ray trace reflections, the more promising from a wider and less demanding solution comes from DLSS, Deep Learning Super Sampling, which can deliver checkerboard like solutions that retain much of the image quality with a reduced performance impact. But again, it's all mostly promises at this point. For now, I will leave these possible benefits out of the equation and concentrate on what Nvidia have been drumming into its consumer base for years. New hardware equals improvements. If you are interested, I wrote a detailed article on my predictions for the new range and performance expectations over on Rectify Gaming before it launched. Link is on screen and below. The short version is they are a victim of their own success, with the tech media largely slating the launch, as predicted, and thus the marketplace echoing that. The dollar to performance chart I created was interesting and shows that value-wise none of them really add up, helped by Nvidia inflating the price to help shift 10 series stock returned or sat in warehouses. Possible by the lack of competition in the marketplace, something and a point I have talked about for many years. Now I decided to dip into the RTX range myself and managed to get a deal via some friends within the trade on this GeForce 2070, a brand I have sworn by and used for years to build and sell alike. Now This is the cheapest entry into top tier GPUs and from my current Radeon 4070 is a worthy increase, sorry 470 is a worthy increase which itself was a sidestep from my previous GTX 970. Now the 470 or 570 cards fall into the 175 to 200 dollars range from 75 pounds the 2070 is three times that at around 600 dollars i managed to get mine for around 430 quid which isn't bad and is a small discount but for this review i will keep it to rrp figures as that is what most will pay sure there's deals out there you might have to get it for 480 or something but by and large we're talking around 600 dollars 500 pounds it's all tested on my Zen 2700 CPU, overclocked at 3.9 GHz with 16 GB of DDR4, clocked at 32 MHz, or 3200 MHz, and an SSD. I have covered an in-depth review of the Zen CPU and how CPU testing is very different to GPU testing. You can check that out in the links below to learn more. But the 2700 is a perfect CPU to max out this card on almost anything here. Now from the offset, I am looking at around three times the performance delta from my 570 to the 2070 to draw even on bang for book. I have my AMD overclocked by 200 MHz on both core and RAM, which is a decent increase and is an obvious boost anyone will add for free. So we have the facts, the specs and the figures, now all we need are the results, and 12 games should be a good spread. For clarity, I have also overclocked the RTX 2070 by 212 MHz both on the core and the memory speed itself respectively, which gives an even base over the standard just like the AMD card. There is probably margin here for even better improvement, but I've done that as a level just so we've got a fair comparison as an overclocked state.
The other thing to bear in mind here is I always try and do a clean install or at least go in manually and clean up the registry here. But with some of the titles using Vulkan API extensions and DX12 extensions, there's definitely different, very separate render paths in some of these engines. And that did cause some issues once I flipped over to the NVIDIA card from the AMD one. So I had to use DDU, which is a great tool. It's open source. It's free. So please, if you ever get a point where you're swapping from manufacturers, I always recommend recommend you use this in safe mode and clear out your old driver and registry. I used to do it manually, but it's so much crap that's put in there now. This is the quickest way to do it and give you a clean install if you get any errors. Things like here, which you see on the Vulkan API pick popping up, it crashes out because it's trying to call certain APIs from NVIDIA and the AMD ones are in the way and vice versa. So you get crashes. And so I did all that before these tests were done, just so anyone says that they've affected the results. They haven't. It is a clean install. So everything is fair and even. So the tests are pretty simple. Although benchmarks in PC games are notoriously misleading for final figures, they work here to represent a like-for-like -like test. Now, on many titles, I used a fixed real-time cutscene. These are the best tests for GPU loads and the exact opposite for CPU tests, or if I can't do that, a fixed run of repeatable gameplay. I run everything at max where possible. It's not always possible. For example, the 470 lacks the RAM to go uber on Wolfenstein, for example. With both 1080 and then a native 4K run with a couple of 1440 thrown in for good measure. VSync is off to show absolute maximum levels. But of course, be aware that VSync will affect the performance levels when engaged. To be safe, a title like this with an unlocked should average somewhere around the mid to high 60s to expect a capped 60 fps to be realistic 70s is the ideal for headroom though 30 30 hertz can be somewhere around the 34 35 it's usually enough to keep it within that range due to the higher margin of frame time therefore the lower headroom is required the range covers some old and new titles with a couple dx12 and vulcan examples included here but bar one dx12 title most run best in dx11 the division so this MMO is about to be superseded by the sequel, but the core focus on consoles means this is a very well-threaded and efficient on CPUs, giving the GPU most of the heavy lifting. Side by side at 1080 Ultra, we see a gulf between the two cards, as expected. The 470 can deliver 58 FPS at 1080p on average, so a great 108060 card for sure. The 2070 can push this up to 107 FPS average, a 184% improvement improvement at HD resolutions is nice, but it makes the 2070 worse value on this first game than the 470. 4K changes the results with the 8 gig memory of the Nvidia being double that of the AMD card makes it a much better spec 4K card. Indeed, we are 196% on average better now. The minimum is around 240% better. Still not quite matching the bang for buck of the 470, but it certainly makes a 4K60 option possible here with some cutbacks on certain areas. Again, that's not for this test. AC Unity, an oldie but still cracking game that stresses modern hardware and certainly flexes CPU. At 1080, the 2070 takes a commanding lead. Some of this comes from the game favoring the API and architecture of Team Green. With an average 80 FPS, it is easily maxing the game out here and almost 200% faster than the 470. So we've clawed back that value here at HD resolutions. 4K is even better though. Four times the main performance and 3.4 percent average are the results here with a locked 4k 30 possible and higher averages if you want to run unlocked makes it the best value for nvidia the so far and gives us better value than the 470 even at 1440p for an extra test the nvidia is 263 percent better but will it continue Dogs 2 was something of an oddity, a much better game technically than the first, but less enjoyable or gripping for me. It certainly looks good though. It's clear that the 470 struggles to hit 1080-60 here at Ultra settings. We are running without the temporal filter option that uses a checkerboard-like reconstruction technique such as Rainbow Six that uses the MSAA or EQAA hardware to reconstruct the final image. This can offer almost 50% improvement on performance with a much smaller IQ impact, but here we are keeping everything 
native and that option turned off. This gives us a 195% increase at 1080 on average and 227% at 4K, making the point clear in which this card is a genuine 4K one. I will let the rest of the test run through, certainly look out for the Doom section and obviously the Shadow of the Tomb Raider section which I cover briefly the DX11 and DX12 differences between the two and that is a clear shift between those two versions. I'll catch up at the end with Wolfenstein 2 which is very much an outlier at this point. Now we come to Machine Games id Tech 6 Beauty that really takes advantage of Vulkan and modern rendering techniques. It really is a showcase on tight optimized code and how to deliver that. Using the fixed real time cutscene at the start of chapter 2 we can get almost perfect examples of this and it gives us the largest gap yet by far. Almost 300% on average faster on the 2070 with 4K still giving us an 81 FPS average to the tune of 400 and 44% over the 470. This game represents the absolute best you can hope for when switching cards here and I'm sure Nvidia worked hard on this alongside Machine Games with it being an AMD link title it would not be missed just how good the Nvidia is here. Some of this may come from the specific reduced shading used on Nvidia cards here that reduce the complexity and fill rate of moving pixels taking into account motion vectors and depth but it is still a worthy addition and secures the best result and a clear victory on straight performance that was never in question though. Does it represent an overall better value than the outgoing 470? Well, with all the results in and DX12 on Shadow showing a solid increase in both top and bottom for the AMD and Nvidia cards, 16 to 52% between the two, it's certainly an example of how much better DX12 can be over a badly optimized DX11 version. The fact is, the results speak for themselves. The target was 300% increase or more, would make the 2070 a bang for book replacement for the 470, but we see a lower 216% average across games, both 1080, 1440 and 4K. This leaves you with a clearly more powerful and better performing card, of course, but it is worse value for money than the AMD card. Fine, so long as you're aware your upgrade is not linear. This value is better if you only factor in 4K though at 238% increase. 
that makes the, the 2070 slightly more sense in purchasing. The fact is, though, you are paying $8.33 per frame on the 470. This is on average. And that rises to $10.71 on the NVIDIA card, a reduction in bang for buck of approximately 22%. My chart from my article, which you saw at the beginning of this video, shows how this sits within the 10 and 20 series range of cards. With 8 gig of RAM and feeding a UHD screen, it is a truly capable card of 4K30 Ultra on almost all titles here, and likely most others with 4K60 being possible on others again at Ultra, such as Doom and obviously Wolfenstein. The biggest gain comes from the choice to cut back on shadow maps, motion blur, depth of field, volumetrics or ambient occlusion to see 4K60 on a great deal more games. Realistically though, this is rarely an option in the 470. Hamstrung by memory and bandwidth, it is the perfect 1080 or even 1440 card with 4K being possible with heavy cutbacks on titles but this will diminish as new games launch and I really wouldn't recommend it as a 4K card. The 2070 is the cheapest entry into this top flight PC GPUs and will offer a substantial improvement to anyone upgrading from this card or other near level as I've just shown you. If you have a 1080 screen, it makes much less sense right now. Some games cannot max it out at its resolution. But at 4K, it makes a great deal more sense with it being one of the best value 4K cards you can buy, well, aside the 1080 or Ti, which at this point makes the card redundant. The sad fact is that I started this video with a statement and for value, the 2070 is not as good a deal as the 400 or 500 series of AMD cards. It's likely not as good a deal as the Vega cards either. It will cost you more for less return on your spend no matter your current card. The facts are here. If you have a 1080 or a Ti then it makes absolutely no sense at all as it would be a sidestep. If you have a 4K screen or want to improve your VR titles, then it really offers a valid and currently good choice for those below the Vega or 1080 cards, but just don't expect a high return on your investment. Anyway, that's it. I'm out. And as always, I'm completely self-funded and independent. So if you can help, you can share, like, chat with me on Twitter, and obviously subscribe to get my viewer count and my subscription count up which is vitally important. This is my first video for 2019 and hopefully it's one that is enjoyed by many and appreciated even if you're not in the market for a new PC GPU. I've tried to give you as much information and as constructively as possible, which hopefully makes a great deal more sense now. You guys and girls take care, play fast, game hard, and I'll catch you on the next one.